Labyrinth City adventurer Nick is abruptly kicked from his team by his mentor Argus, followed by his girlfriend Claudine dumping him. Disillusioned, Nick develops an otaku lifestyle around teen idol Agate. To fund this lifestyle, Nick returns to adventuring but requires a new team. By chance at an inn, he shares a table with sorceress Tiana, ex-priest Zem, and dragon girl Karen, all disillusioned over something. Tiana is a magical prodigy jilted by her jealous fiancé, causing her to become a gambling addict and fail to become an adventurer because her glaring eyes scare away potential teammates. Zem used to be a healer priest until he rejected the advances of a young village girl. Angered, she accused him of rape, leading to his expulsion from the priesthood. He decided to become an adventurer, but freed from his vow of chastity has become a drunken womanizer. Curran merely explains someone she trusted stole something from her. The four drink together over their shared inability to trust people. Nick realizes they will remain disillusioned unless they do something about it and suggests they form a team together. At the Guild, Nick learns Curran is famous for being sole survivor of a team that attempted a C-rank labyrinth and all died. Nick decides to name their new team the Survivors. As each team member has trust issues, they set up rules that make it impossible to access team wages unless all four agree. As a new team, they start at the G-rank and must defeat two G-rank labyrinths to be promoted. Tiana accidentally shoots a spell at Curran, damaging their already fragile trust and causing resentment. They reach the dungeon boss, a giant slime, which Tiana recklessly kills alone, covering everyone in slime and increasing Curran's resentment. As a team building exercise, Nick asks everyone to reveal their strengths and weaknesses. Tiana apologizes to Curran by revealing she is weak against fire and close combat, at which Curran excels, restoring some trust. At the next dungeon, they face an intelligent, magic-resistant ogre, and Curran is able to trust Tiana to protect her while she kills the ogre. Everyone begins to feel closer, until Nick accidentally causes Curran to drop and smash an important charm from her bag. In the past, Curran served the human she believed would become the hero, Kalios. Curran was swindled by a merchant, but Kalios exposed the crime and forced him to give Curran the necklace, which she treasured. Kalios eventually betrayed her and stole her Dragon King gem, a jewel sacred to the Dragon Kin she was tasked to keep safe for her whole life. After failing to track Kalios, she gave up, until she encountered Fifth, an adventurer so strong he had permission to enter labyrinths alone. He was also a notorious food enthusiast, and even though they only spoke once he inspired Curran, causing her to return to adventuring. In the present, Nick attempts to buy a new necklace to apologize, but Agate, a friend of Nick's from before her idol career, suggests he simply continue to be Curran's friend. Curran, who truly is not upset about the necklace, is just happy her life is better than before. The four party members realize they are becoming popular at the guild and celebrate. The guild abruptly hires them to explore a dungeon rumored to contain the Holy Sword of Bonds. They enter the Labyrinth of Bonds and locate the sword, which possesses intelligence and explains he can only be wielded by people with strong bonds of friendship. Sword is disappointed they plan to sell him. Removing Sword activates a golem made of liquid nanomachines that cannot be damaged. Nick manages to activate Sword's blade. Yet Sword is confused. Nick's friendship bonds aren't strong enough to activate him fully. Nick falls to a lower floor and Curran rescues him. Curran explains to Nick she kept the necklace to remind her of Kalios, but it kept her stuck in the past, so Nick breaking it helped her move on. Their reconciliation fully activates Sword, fusing them into one body. With their combined power, the golem is destroyed. They give Sword to the guild for the bounty, only to reveal it was a weaker copy from a nearby storeroom, and Sword, now calling himself Bond, has joined their team as an androgynous young man. Bond is disappointed their team bylaws prevent them interfering with each other's hobbies, so they always split up to celebrate on payday. Tiana invites Bond to accompany her since he doesn't have his own hobby yet. The survivors all dream of the lives they had before. In particular, Tiana dreams of her academy instructor whose career she accidentally ruined through her own ambition. And Nick dreams of his ex, Claudine. Their dreams turn out to be unintentionally caused by Kazuna's telepathy. 
while monster hunting Kazuna reveals he contains the sword skills of all his past wielders. While at a restaurant with Curran and Kazuna, Nick spots Claudine, a known con artist, try to take a young man's money using the same con she once used on Nick. Claudine leaves after Nick exposes her. Claudine later provokes a fight between Nick and her party leader Leon, leader of the Iron Tigers. However, in private, Leon reveals to Nick he will soon dump Claudine as she has made him rich, but her cons draw too much attention. He also congratulates Nick on forming the Survivor's Party, as he assumes Nick is conning them for their money. Nick beats him up for even suggesting he would betray his first real friends. The guild leader breaks them up as a street brawl is beneath career adventurers. Instead, Leon challenges Nick to the traditional mathematics bare knuckle battle. It is explained, bare knuckle mathematics involves 10 rounds of brawling. Nick and Leon fight, while Curran and Claudine solve maths questions to end each round. Whoever gets the most questions correct earns their fighter a free punch to their opponent. Curran panics as she is bad at maths. Zem learns that the Iron Tigers plan to cheat using their party member Beg. During round one and two, Curran loses to Claudine, so Nick is punched twice. The other survivors cannot locate Beg anywhere. Curran loses the third round, so Nick is punched again. The survivors suspect Beg is waiting for the later rounds. To force him to appear, Tiana suggests they answer all the questions in one go. Even though if Curran loses, Nick would be punched seven times. Guildmaster Vilma agrees, so Claudine uses telepathy crystals to get the correct answers from Beg. Beg is caught by the survivors who also expose Claudine's telepathy crystal. The Iron Tigers are arrested and Claudine cries, revealing she never wanted to be a criminal and hates who she has become. Curran is happy she learned maths because she can now identify bargains on restaurant menus. Leon is interrogated about a treasure he looted from a labyrinth years ago, the Sword of Ruinous Evolution. Elsewhere, Tiana, Nick and Kazuna enjoy themselves at a casino which is attacked by Leon looking for Nick, having used the sword to escape and evolve into a monster. Leon, whose sense of smell can now detect lies, threatens Tiana for Nick's location. Tiana is amused by Leon's assumption she and Nick are friends. Leon's nose tells him Tiana has no faith Nick will save her, so he decides to just kill her. However, Nick does save her with Kazuna in his sort of bond form, surprising Tiana. Evolution evolves Leon further and takes control of his body, rampaging wildly while Leon begs him to stop. Tiana and Nick prove their real friendship by using Bond's full power to fuse into one body. Leon, despite his hate of humans, refuses to believe he is truly an evil person and allows Tiana and Nick to coat him in the casino's anti-magic playing cards, returning him to normal. Evolution is sealed away and Leon returns to prison content that he is not evil at heart, especially when Nick reveals he avoided killing anyone even with Evolution controlling him. Thanks to the adventurer amateur journalist Olivia Taylor, Kazuna becomes obsessed with Stepping Man, a monster that can leap over rooftops and kidnaps children. With proof Stepping Man is actually a human using invisibility magic, the survivors decide to catch him. They confirm Stepping Man has a bounty for his capture, but the mercenary guild insists they capture a smaller bounty first, Hale Hardy, a suspected murderer. The mercenary Ash, angry at adventurers taking mercenary work, enters a wager with Tiana on the success of them capturing Hale. They track Hale to the slums where Zem, as a healer, is disturbed by the living conditions of many people who are sick, drug addicted, and dying. After capturing Hale, the survivors are confronted by Dr. Nalgava, another ex-priest who has been treating Hale for yellow demon sickness. When asked about Stepping Man, Hale reveals he has seen Olivia in the slums talking to children. The survivors cannot ignore Olivia's suspicious behavior and confront her about being Stepping Man. Olivia flees by jumping into the air straight through the building's roof, just like Stepping Man. Raina's mother, retired adventurer Ada the Sommelier, is grateful the survivors saved her. Raina asks to become Zem's disciple, but he refuses, revealing his past experience gave him a phobia of young girls. Ada decides to train the survivors against Stepping Man's skills. Light body for flight and heavy body for strength. 
After encountering Stepping Man again, Nick also doubts it is Olivia. Suspecting Stepping Man is using a magic artifact. Nick asks Leon's advice and learns the most likely artifact is an Illusion King gem. Its illusions are easily broken by confronting the user by name, meaning Olivia is definitely not Stepping Man. Olivia later attacks them, believing Nick is Stepping Man. After determining that neither of them are Stepping Man, Olivia admits Stepping Man was her adventurer title before she became a reporter, meaning Stepping Man is using her title and skills to frame her. Examining a dead girl, one of Stepping Man's victims, they find an illusion gem fragment designed to obscure her identity. With the fragment removed, she is revealed as Martha, a blacksmith's daughter who was receiving treatment for yellow demon sickness. Zem believes he knows who Stepping Man is. The survivors confront Stepping Man and break his illusions with his name, Dr. Nalgava. His obsession with curing yellow demon sickness began when his own daughter died of it. The sickness is usually sexually transmitted, so after she died, Nalgava went mad with the rumors of how his daughter became infected. By experimenting on kidnapped children, Nalgava has proven it can also be transmitted from contact with infected blood. Zem confronts him with the pain he caused his victim's parents, but Nalgava is unrepentant. An armored warrior named White Mask suddenly tries to kill Nalgava and the survivors to keep the truth hidden. Curran and Tiana are hurt, so Olivia distracts White Mask, identifying his armor as a similar relic to Kazuna. Nick and Zem combine using Kazuna's bond ability and manage to stab White Mask in the face. Amused, they actually hurt him. White Mask spares their lives and disappears. Injured by falling rubble and also infected with yellow demon sickness, Nalgava opts to die when the building collapses. Since White Mask uses a relic and undoubtedly has a powerful master controlling him, Olivia reveals to the survivors that she is also a weapon relic like Kazuna, the anti-demon god Sword of War. After defeating Stepping Man, the survivors all enter a state of depression. Nick remembers meeting Argus, who saved him from the bandit that murdered his parents. Zem takes over Nalgava's clinic in the slums. Tiana returns to gambling, but no longer enjoys it. When the survivors meet, there is uncertainty over what to do next. Curran begins brooding over Kalios and wonders if she should forget about him and move on. Olivia uncovers evidence the dark demon god will soon return, with White Mask somehow involved. She is also investigating the black market that sold Nalgava the Illusion King gem. Curran takes an interest in the market as it may be where Kalios sold her Dragon King gem. The survivors promise if she ever wants to find her gem, they will help. Suddenly inspired, the survivors decide to uncover the conspiracy, expose White Mask and stop the Dark Demon God's return. Kazuna and Olivia, both immortal artifacts who will long outlive the survivors, agree the survivors have potential to defeat the Dark Demon God, but still have a long way to go. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like and hit the subscribe button. Also, check out my anime merch store and unlock some of the other recap shows by going to my Ko-Fi page. Link will be in the description.